As you know, uh, for a period of time, we've been wanting to make a deal, and so have the Taliban, and we pulled back. Uh, we were getting close, and we pulled back. We didn't want to do it because of what they did. It was not a good, it's not a good thing they did with uh, killing a soldier. I don't know if they knew he was a soldier, but he was a soldier, an American soldier from Puerto Rico. And uh, he killed him. Uh, they killed a United Nations soldier, and they also killed, uh, they killed a total of 12 people. They thought that was good negotiating power. I said, no, that's bad negotiating power. That was not good, what they did. And since then, we've hit them so hard, they've never been hit this hard. In the history of the war, they have not, never been hit this hard. And they want to make a deal. So we'll see what happens. If they make it, fine. If they don't make it, that's fine. Uh, we're going to be able to do everything we're doing, and actually more. And at the same time, we're bringing down the number of troops substantially. Uh, but we're able to, because of the weaponry and all of the things that we have in place, we can do uh, actually more damage with even fewer troops. So we're, we're bringing it down very substantially. And uh, we'll be down at a number that's very, that's a good number. And we're going to stay until such time as uh, we have a deal or we have total victory, and they want to make a deal very badly. So we're dealing with this is really for the media, I guess, more than anybody, because the president knows what I'm saying. Uh, the Taliban wants to make a deal, and we're meeting with them, and we're saying it has to be a ceasefire. And they didn't want to do a ceasefire, but now they do want to do a ceasefire, I believe. It probably work out that way, and uh, we'll see what happens. But we've made tremendous progress. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It's so nice to see a president who is actually competent and could, you know, find his way around a room. We've never seen Joe Biden do anything spontaneous and everything that President Trump does just feels so authentic. Like he was serving the food, sitting there eating it. Joe Biden would have started talking about like his shoelaces in 1957 and dog face lying pony soldiers because he has no clue where he is and he has total dementia. By the way, you know, what everyone says like, oh, you're not a doctor. You can't diagnose Joe Biden. Don't you think like we've gotten way past that point by now? So I'm thankful for President Trump. I'm thankful that he'll hopefully be back in the White House in 2024. Thankful for Botox, my family, my dog, um, stuffing, warm weather, palm trees, the fact that I live in the free state of Florida and um, that we have somewhat of a democracy or a constitutional republic in place and we're fighting for it every day. And um, people who have Trump derangement syndrome, I'm not thankful for you. It's just so hard to watch those people. And you can hear my dog barking now, another person, wolf wolf that I'm thankful for. But the people with Trump derangement syndrome, they're really my favorite because it's like they hate President Trump more than they love their country. And our country is something that we should all be thankful for. And instead they devote all of their time, energy and effort and thought process into hating one man. And you know, you see right now we're having so many problems domestically and abroad. And if people really just peeled back the layers of the onion and thought about what was going on, they would realize that under President Trump, we had $2 gas, some mean tweets. Uh, I'd rather have those mean tweets. Affordable prices at the grocery store, no foreign wars. Um, you know, a safe southern border. Right now we're living in honestly utter despair. And um, we need President Trump back and 
those moments just show you how great he is and how we have a total bumbling buffoon in the White House. He probably thinks it's Easter. All right, once again, happy Thanksgiving.